Good morning and welcome to Study Island Benchmarking, a snapshot of performance on high stakes assessments. I'm super excited that you're here joining me today and I hope today is very uh, informative to you during your preparation for your high stakes assessments. I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Crystal and I live and currently reside in the Dallas, uh, Texas area. I've been with Edmentum for three years and I actually have my bachelor's um, in human development and family sciences from the University of Texas. I am a services implementation specialist here at Edmentum, which just means I help um, educators implement our solutions in the classroom so that they can achieve their goals with their students. And here at Edmentum, we embody this educator first philosophy, which just means as um, we go about our working orders, we're putting our educators at the forefront of everything we do. So as we go along, if you have questions, feel free to ask. There is a Q&A box and a chat box down at the bottom of your screen so that you can ask questions. And then if you are listen listening to this recording, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Our email is implementation specialist at edmentum.com. Specialist is plural. So let's go ahead and get started. Today's webinar will be about 30 minutes. So today we're going to look at an overview of uh, the uh, Edmentum Study Island benchmarks. I'm also going to do a product demonstration so that you know how kind of they work and how you can use them in your school or district. I'm also going to take questions at the end if you have them. So we have some time reserved there if you want to save your questions to the end. But again, feel free to ask as we go along. And then finally, I'm going to point you to where you can go to get ongoing help and support. So let's get started. So let's talk a little bit about Study Island Benchmarks. Study Island Benchmarks are medium cycle assessments and they're designed to capture student proficiency on standards based uh, grade level skills. And then in a recent um, research report, we actually found that students who are exposed to Study Island Benchmarks, their scores on their uh, high stakes assessments actually were strong and significantly associated with their scores on their high uh, stakes assessment tests. This just means you can have confidence in our benchmarks and use them as a data point when targeting and planning instruction because of their rigor. Uh, structure and quality item types that mirror what your students will see on their state assessments. So typically you're given about three benchmarks ranging 30 to 40 questions. Again, it is going to mirror what's already on your benchmark and you're given complete control over when you give those benchmarks. So if you want to give those, you know, two times a year, three times a year, that's completely up to you. You decide when um, those are given. Now the benchmarks can be assigned from the administrator level or it can be assigned to a teacher with uh, permissions. So we give that flexibility for um, you to really have control over when and who um, gives the benchmarks. And then benchmarks can also be assigned from a district account. So if you're a district administrator here in Study Island, feel free to uh, schedule those benchmarks for your schools. They, you can schedule them and look at the results from all schools because we provide you with a uh, benchmark report that can be used for item analysis or standards-based reporting. So I talked a little bit about that study, um, impacts of Study Island practice and benchmarks. And again, in this research, we just found that students who um, were exposed and took Study Island benchmarks had a strong, um, had strong, significant um, results that mirrored what was on their high stakes assessment. And you can see that here. Figure three shows you um, Study Island users over non Study Island users and their PSSA scores. And figure four. Uh oh, figure four shows you the average score uh, for math. So on the, on the uh, left hand side is ELA and on the right is math. Strong and significant associations there. And you can also find this study in the Help Center um, of, the stu of Study Island. So if you go into the Help Center and look under the, um, the Help tab, you will see this, um, this research study that you can take a look at. All right, so I've done enough talking. Let's go ahead and get into the program. I'm going to go ahead and do a live demo. Okay, so I am logged in as a teacher that has permissions uh, to schedule a benchmark. And if you look over here, under the main menu, we have the benchmarking option. This will exist for both teachers and administrators. 
So I'm going to click on benchmarking. And one of the first things I see is the preferences area. And in this preferences area, you want to set this before you actually schedule the test. You have the option to disable pre and post tests uh, for benchmark uh, test subjects. So if you don't want your students to have to test again after taking a benchmark or you don't want them to access the pre and post tests that are actually on the topic sheets, you would turn this on. You also have the option to allow students to take matching topics from the benchmark subjects. So this just means if you turn this on, students are able to practice those questions that are similar to the questions on the benchmarks or they cover the same standards that are on the benchmark. Um, if you turn that on, students will be able to practice those questions and um, kind of get um, so, some exposure to the questions um, and those standards while they're also taking the benchmark. So that's what that button does there. We also have this exclude constructed response question responses and results from benchmark reports. What this just means is that the constructed response questions are still going to be accessible. However, the responses and the results will not need to be graded. They will not be included on the benchmark reports. So if you have teachers that you do not want to, um, if you don't want your teachers or if you don't want yourself to have to grade those uh, constructed response questions and you don't want them to impact the reports or the benchmarking scores, then you'll choose this exclude constructed response. And remember, just do all of these preferences before you actually schedule the benchmark. So down here, we have the benchmark test schedule. Right now, I don't have any current benchmarks. You will see I have one upcoming, so I've already scheduled that ahead of time, so you do have that functionality and feature. I have current benchmarks, and then previous benchmarks are all the benchmarking windows that have closed. I can come here to look at results um, of the students of previous, on past uh, benchmarks there. I'm going to choose schedule a benchmark so we can go through there. And the first thing you'll do is select your standards. So this is my, um, my trial account. So I have both Common Core and Texas standards. I'm going to go ahead and choose Texas fourth grade as an example. And then you'll select your subject. So I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, math. Okay. Then you'll select your test. You are typically given three benchmarks. In this case, Texas has four. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the first benchmark. You can start with, um, with whichever benchmark you would like. They are all um, the same difficulty, nothing from one benchmark to another changes except for the questions. And the questions all come from a, uh, a question bank. So questions um, are not the same. The difficulty is the same. Um, the only thing that's different is that there are different questions on the test. All right, so I'm going to choose my first benchmark. I can always preview it here if I want to see what questions my students are being asked in Study Island's benchmarks. When this loads, you will see that the students, um, you, you see all the questions that the students are going to receive. And then you also see, and I make it bigger here, the option to print the benchmark. This just gives you the option if you want to give this uh, test hard copy, you can print here and it'll go to your printer to, um, to uh, be uh, given out hard copy. So that option is there. We also um, will need to select your class. So since I chose the fourth grade benchmark, my users of level four or my fourth graders are automatically selected. Um, you also have the ability to choose just classes, or you can choose to... Um, give benchmarks to users in other grade levels, but for now I'm just going to stick to users in grade level four. Now after that we have the uh, test dates, and the test dates are the window that you want to give the benchmark, so it always starts one day ahead of time, so right now you can see that it is the second, but right now it's showing the third. I can always move that to the second just by clicking on the date, and then I can choose um, when I want this benchmark to close, so right now it's closing on the 10th, which is next Thursday. You can schedule it as far out as you need to. However, once this date has passed, you cannot come back in and um, schedule the test or uh, extend the window. You would then need to reschedule a test. So if you know ahead of time that you're going to need to push out the date, go ahead and come in here before the date you have selected here and push it out as far as you need it to be. 
Next, you'll choose the time available and when the benchmark will retract itself. So right now I just have eight to three. That's perfectly fine in school hours. So you can always change that if you need to just by clicking into the box. And then you have the options to allow students to work on the benchmark on the weekend and also to allow um, randomization of questions. So once you choose those options, you'll choose schedule the test. And then your test has been scheduled. You'll see it is now under my current benchmarking area. All my testing um, preferences have been uh, set. I can always view the results once students um, begin turning it in. I have the option to edit, delete, and preview the test once more. Now, if I look at the um, test from the student's perspective, I'm logged in right now as Jason Smith, and I can see my test right here in the upper right-hand corner. I have a benchmark. I can see that there's no calculator allowed. I just click the Start button to begin taking my test. Now, the test will present its question one by one um, to the students. The student has the option to go to any question number that they would like. And they have a key here that shows the questions that's been answered in this grayish color, um, the current question that they're on, which is this yellow color, and then any unanswered questions. So they can quickly click to um, any answered or unanswered questions they need to get to if they skip around. All right, also in the tools area, um, there is the option to make the text bigger. We also have a text to speech option that you can turn on in the student preferences. This student does not have it on, but if you need to make that accommodation, it will appear right here in the preferences, or I'm sorry, in the tools area for the student. Now, also, we have a scratch pad that the student can use. We also have highlighters. This is an eraser for the highlighter. To highlight, the student would just um, highlight, would uh, select the text that needs to be highlighted and then choose the color. Okay. And then we have a reference sheet if they need that as well. Students also have the option to save for later, which means they can come back and um, finish the test. And they have the option to turn in the test. Okay. Now, when the student gets to the last question of the test, they do not have the next button that you saw previously, like next question here. They have the option to reset this question, not the whole test. And then at the very bottom, it tells them, attention, you have reached the end of the test. Please check your answers before turning in the test. They can go through and check their answers. Again, they can use this uh, drop down here with the questions to return to any unanswered questions. And when they're all done, they can turn in the test. Now they will get a quick snapshot of the reporting category, not the questions, the reporting category, the number of items that were tested, the number of points they could have earned, and the percentage earned here. And then after that, they will not see this area anymore. They can hit the Done button and they'll be taken back to Study Island. I'm going to pause. Do we have any questions about that? Okay, well, we have come to the question and the answering portion. I didn't see any questions, but if you have them, feel free to chat them in, use the q and I'm here to answer any questions you might have. While you're doing that, let me go ahead and give you some information for help and support that you uh, we have for you. So um, we can our support team is available to you um, to answer any other questions you have um, or any uh, concerns you may have. Um, available to you Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, they can be contacted by phone, and for Study Island, they can also be contact contacted by chat. I um, mean, we have the email option. So their phone number is right here on the screen. Their email is support at studyisland.com. And you can use this live support button here. As you can see in my screenshot, to contact them by email. Now, my name is Crystal. If you have any questions for me, any implementation questions, I can definitely assist. Uh, my email is also on the screen.
All right, and I'm just looking at this chat. It doesn't look like we have any questions, which means I must have did an okay job again. But if you do, feel free to reach out to us through one of those um, portals, email, chat, me, um, or just give us a call. We're definitely here to assist you. I want to thank you so much for your time, and I really appreciate you guys um, spending some um, some additional time with me to learn about our benchmarks again if you have any questions about pricing quotes feel free to contact our sales team their number can be found within that contact button in study island or on our website www.studyisland.com thank you so much for joining y'all have a wonderful day